gonna do is we're gonna isolate this pro edit. So we're gonna create a vector around the frame. So I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. And I'm gonna zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I have selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. I right click on the next corner better. because they and click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna hold the space bar again, click and drag, pan up, and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna make it I like for the vectors better because they red. give you some what I'm gonna do now is enable the layer of the snow border. I'm gonna click and drag her up to the top, and I'm just gonna make a selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her as quick as we can. So just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. Snow border. I'm going to select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm going to do now is click on the top layer hold the shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected and I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here too. What I'm going to do now is press Control T, Command C to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Control 0. That's it we need to do. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask. In the properties panel, you can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go into window, properties. Click on mask edge, and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So you keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone, but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair hopefully we'll get a better selection. Now, didn't do that good of a job here, so I have white in these areas here. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky. And I'm not going to take the time to do so now. I will click and choose fit to screen. And what we're going to work on now is extra elements that are going to help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're going to use. We're going to use this shovel with snow. So I'm going to just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I got to do is get rid of the shovel. I'm going to click on the lasso tool. I'm going to make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace. Or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d in the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel i'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we got to work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to 
take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here in the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen and then I will just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK. And what I'm gonna do now is go into image, adjustment, levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're gonna be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm gonna drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm gonna do now is click on the brush tool, select black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm gonna increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just gonna paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. And I'm just painting these pixels away, which represent the floor. And once again, I'm gonna go into image, adjustment, levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid tones a little bit. And press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm gonna press Control, Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the layers panel. On the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm gonna click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now it's not a perfect selection, but it's gonna work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors and I think we're gonna be able to get away with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply click on the layer, select the move tool accordingly. I'm holding shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle's not really matching my scene, so I'm gonna right click on it and choose flip horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right-click on it and choose Distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press Enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. Right-click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool. And maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm gonna click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm gonna click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm gonna collapse it, and now it's in that group. Next, I'm gonna hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then, with the brush tool, I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm gonna use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black and maybe shape the snow a little bit better something like that. What we're gonna do now is work with different elements. So I'm gonna open up the libraries panel and I'm gonna open up this file here which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way if you don't have Photoshop CC you won't have the libraries panel but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm gonna do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm gonna click on the lasso tool and I'm gonna select this element first. So I'm gonna select it, go to edit and copy or you can press control C. I'm gonna deselect that element, control D, command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with and I'm gonna paste it here. Control